everyone! Welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting channel. This channel focuses on knitting, crocheting, and other yarn-related topics. I am Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter, coming to you from the sunny city of Phoenix, Arizona. I am so glad everybody is here with me today. I actually got through that all in the first try. We're going to keep it. <laughs> Just saying, guys. Uh, <laughs> To all of you returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and visiting me today. For all of you new viewers, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting family. I am so excited that you guys are here. Okay, does everybody know? Yes, I did actually make show notes today. Last time was a little disoriented, so if you ever see me like look down to read off something, it's probably the show notes that I'm looking at. Okay, whew. First off, what am I wearing? I am wearing Rombi by Terry Crews. And Rombi is, this one, is made out of Huasco yarn, Botany Lace. It's a fingering weight uh, yarn. And it turned out really well. I really like it. If you guys are interested in seeing more about this, go ahead and check out past episodes. That's where you will see it. Okay, so if you guys are looking for anything, let's get the rest of the housekeeping out of the way. If you guys are looking for anything uh, that I talk about today during the during the show, links to anything, names of yarns, anything like that, check out the description box below. It's all in there. All the show notes, everything. My uh, link to me on Ravelry is also in the description box below if you guys are interested. Whew. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done with the intro here, guys. Keep with me. Uh, this, just looking at my notes here. This episode is going to be approximately 45 minutes, I hope. Uh, the reason why is we have a few extra things going on today that we don't normally have. So along with my completed objects, my whips, what's up next on my needle, and my normal enhancing the stash, I also have a little bit more of my goals for 2020, since this is the first episode of 2020. Which, wow, it's the first episode of 2020. It, it's really crazy. Not 100% sure where 2019 went, but 2020. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Let's give that a go. All right, so I hope you guys are all ready for some amazing content here today. I guess I'm going to say grab your uh, project and grab the beverage of your choice. Come on back and let's get started. So completed objects for this episode. There are several. Let's just say that. So the first ones I completed are, I completed four washcloths. And so there are various ones. So this, again, I was recently teaching at a uh, fiber festival locally to me. It was a brand new fiber festival. She's trying to, the person I know is trying to get it going. And she's like, you know, it'd be really great if we had a how to knit or, you know, ask your basic knitting questions, a little station. And so she asked me to man that booth and for her. And I was like, oh, sure. So I was like, you know, we're going to teach people how to do a basic knitting. You know, we need some basic stuff. So we decided on a washcloth between her and I. And so these are some of my prototypes, some of my test ones, and then one that I actually worked on while I was there because I got bored. Um, so I was knitting along with people that I was answering questions with and stuff. So again, these are just basic knit washcloths. This one here. This one here is made out of sugars and cream. Let me grab, there's so much stuff stacked up next to me. Oh, sorry, Jay. Also, if you hear snoring in the background, JD is literally laying on the pile that's over here, um, sleeping in the middle of it, so he is not gonna be very happy. I used sugars and cream, or sugar, yeah, sugar and cream, not sugars, sugar and cream. Uh, it is 100% cotton. It is readily available in the United States. I don't know where else it's readily available. Um, I do know it's online. This particular color is, if I can find it, wait, blueberry. There it is. It's called blueberry. Oh, nice. All right. So again, this is a 100% cotton. It's a worsted weight yarn. And yes, I did actually have to go out and buy cotton for these projects. I didn't own any. I used it all up in my 100 soap sacks. <laughs> so yes, I did go out and buy cotton. So this is technically part of stash enhancement, but we're going through it now. So this is washcloth number one with the sugars and cream. So washcloths two and three are various 
oh, and they're not all exactly the same size. These two are, but my uh, sugars and cream one isn't. These are made out of Hobby Lobby's. I love this cotton. Hobby Lobby is a local store here in the United States. Again, looks like this. So this is actually the purple color here. Um, there are various colors, but it's again 100% cotton. And it is again a worsted weight yarn, or at least they say it's worsted weight. I'm not 100% sure if it's truly as thick a worsted weight as like the sugars and cream. I think sugars and cream is actually a little bit, you know, they do call it a medium. They call it a four. It's a medium. They still say use size eight needles or five millimeters if anybody's looking for it. Um, again, various shades of this were used for these. And I also did various cast-ons, so you guys can kind of see the differences in the cast-ons on the bottoms and the tops. Um, I was trying to figure out what it was that I wanted to teach. <laughs> so, again, these are made a little bit larger. My mom prefers a larger washcloth that at least covers your entire hand. Um, so these were both made a little bit on the bigger side instead of the smaller side. Um, so again, Hobby Lobbies, I love this cotton. It's a worsted weight yarn. My last one here is also from Hobby Lobby yarn. It's also a 100% cotton yarn and it's called, it's a Yarn B Sugar Wheel Cotton. It is a lightweight, so it's three, so I put it at probably a Sport DK, just letting you guys know. It uses a four millimeter needle, US size six, UK size eight, crochet hook size seven, Size 7. I don't know what size 7 crochet hook means, but it's 4.5 millimeter. There we go. Sorry. I, I'm just reading the label, guys. That's all I got. It is colorway number 58. No, wait. Colorway number 30, Honey, It's Homemade. So this is Honey, It's Homemade. Obviously, I can make a whole other one out of here. Probably two. Um, I just really like the colors. I liked the gray colors in here. Along with the purples, I thought that was really nice. Um, so again, I made this one. This one was actually made on a diagonal, so it was knit diagonally compared to the other ones at a smaller needle size. Right. My second set of completed objects, and I call them sets, um, because let's be honest, they're a set. I've already given some of these away. <laughs> I, again, when I was at Hobby Lobby buying cotton, I actually went and I found something that Hobby Lobby sells, and it's called Scrubology. It is a Hobby Lobby yarn that is designed to be scrubby. It's scratchy, it's scrubby. It's like those scrubbies that you guys buy from like the, the stores. So the Five and Dimes, the Walmarts, the Targets of the world, the Kmarts, please fill in where you guys wanna know. Um, I really liked this pattern. So this pattern in particular comes from a uh, creative grandma. I will link it in the description box below. I just thought her tutorial on this was A, fast, easy to understand, and complete. It was, to me, it was a very well done tutorial. And as a, I wouldn't call myself an absolute novice crocheter. Uh, these are crocheted, by the way. These are crocheted. I wouldn't tell my, I wouldn't call myself a complete novice crocheter. However, I'm not the best crocheter in the whole wide world. <laughs> so, I just, I really thought this tutorial was really, really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you can see, like I made up several. So I actually wound up getting two skeins, um, one in this beautiful teal colorway and another one in this beautiful purple colorway. Unfortunately, I do not know what the color numbers are <laughs> for these or what the color names are for these. Uh, the reason being, <laughs> I threw out the ball bands. I don't know where they're at. Uh, but Hobby Lobby, Scrubology yarn, these are things. Um, how many can you get out of a skein? I got five out of the purple and I got four and a half out of the, the teal turquoise color. Um, the reason being I got a little bit tighter as I went along. So I got a full five out of here and only about four and a half out of here. Probably got four and three quarters, to be honest with you, out of the um, the teal aqua color, green seafoam. Again, I don't know what color to call this, guys. 
um, this bluey, greeny, aqua -y color. Um, Tours, I got a full five out of here, and I just squeaked by with five, just to let you guys know. I do crochet a little bit tighter than the average, just like I knit a little bit tighter than the average, but I did use the exact hook size that was called for by Creative Grandma. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I believe she says you can only get four, but I got five. Um, so that's why I say that, so be really careful. I got five out of the purple, so you guys can see. I got four and a half, four and three quarters out of the blue. But there you guys go. Again, I thought these things were really great, and why I decided to go ahead and get these and make these up. Um, I was watching the tutorial as I was doing other things near Christmas time, and um, you know, she had a really good thing about how you could use these scrubbies for hostess gifts. You take a couple of scrubbies, so you take like two scrubbies put them in uh, with a bottle of dish soap into a bag or a little clear bag and you tie it with ribbon and that becomes your hostess gift for the year. And I was like, hey, that is a genius idea. So I have a lot of friends and things that really enjoy receiving the homemade items that I produce between my various hobbies. Um, but I don't always have time and I can't always produce really large items, but these are small and fast and easy and they're very economical. And then if you take a small bottle of dish soap and you put it with it, it makes it a very useful gift, not just something that can sit on somebody's shelf and be pretty. And it also doesn't fill you with calories because, you know, everybody else brings chocolates and wines and all that kind of stuff. So I found that her idea of a hostess gift using the scrubbies and a bottle of dish soap to be genius. Again, not my idea. I got it from Crochet Gram uh, Creative Grandma. Again, check out the description box below. Okay, that's about all I can say about these, but I love these. I am definitely gonna go back and get more because my mom wants to steal these from me. So I'm gonna go get more for her. So <laughs> I'm gonna make more of those. All right, so what is my big completed uh, project right now? See if I can get JD to stop laying on it. Sorry, buddy, mommy needs this. He's like, you took away my toy. My dog loves blankets. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so I did finish Baby Girl Blanket by Tatiana Fedorova. It is spectacular. However, it is also huge. Now, Again, baby girl blanket. Looks like that. Uh, and it is by Tatiana Fedorova. Check the top of the screen for spellings and all that kind of stuff. You can find it on Ravelry. I think this is right side up. I think. Yes, I think it is. Okay. There is no way I'm going to be able to put this whole thing in camera. So I'm going to show it to you in camera and then I'm also going to insert a picture of it when it's laid flat because I still haven't seen it yet and it is big. So here we go. So this is the very top of it. Oh, hold on. Okay, hang on, gotta do a little more. All right, so there's probably the bottom. I don't even know if you guys can see the bottom. And JD's going to go bark at people. Sorry in advance. Okay, sorry for the interruption, everyone. Uh, JD had a bit of a barking moment there. <laughs> so let's try that again. All right, I'm going to stop trying to hold it all up completely because it's never going to work. But I'm going to insert a picture here as I talk about it. So as I said, this is by Tatiana Fedorova. This pattern turns out to be and it says it right in the pattern, approximately 41 by 51 inches, which is approximately, if I can do my math anywhere remotely close to correct, is approximately 101 centimeters by 100 and, let's see if I can do this right again, <laughs> 125, 26 centimeters. Don't quote me on that, but I will put it down in the description box below. I know there's two and a half centimeters to every inch, so I think my math is right. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. 
So this was actually made out of paint box yarn, Simply Erin. It is a 100% acrylic yarn. Uh, it is designed for a baby. It was made for a baby. So there you go. I went ahead and I purchased 10 skeins of the paint box. It is in the peach colorway, um, which is color number 254. There are, again, approximately 50 different colors you can choose from when you are purchasing paint box. So don't think you guys are stuck to just one color or even a small sample of colors. There's huge. <laughs> There's a huge quantity of colors. So it is a four weight yarn. Uh, it has approximately 201 yards and 184 meters per skein. It is washable. It is dryable. Great for kids, right? But I did, as you guys can see, there's the majority of this skein left. I did break into the 10th skein when it came to, I'm going to hold this up. Um, when it came to about the last row and a half, I needed the 10th skein for the last row and a half. So if I cut down one row from each side, I would not have needed the 10th skein. Uh, I believe mine actually hits the pretty much true to um, gauge, even though I never checked gauge. <laughs> I never checked gauge, but it's mine's pretty close to gauge based on my height. Because um, when I hold it up, it grazes the floor and comes to about my mouth. And so there's about six inches, you know, five, six inches from the rest of my head. Um, so again, I'm 5'7". So keep that all in mind. But again, Tatiana Fedorova baby girl blanket. It's going, it's great. It's a good pattern. It's a long pattern, guys. I will tell you that. Um, if you chose to do this out of DK, I think it would be a little bit more normal sized baby blanket. I think it would be more in the 30 to 35 inch by 35 to 40 inch range in size versus the 41 by 51. Uh, my mom is a sewer, so she told me that's approximately the same size as a twin size quilt here in the United States. I don't know what that translates into in Europe uh, and the rest of the world, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you guys can kind of look that up based on that. So again, great pattern, huge. It works as not just a baby blanket, but also like a tummy time blanket. But also will transfer with the child into like their first bed, um, their first, you know, big kid bed. <laughs> but it is baby girl blanket and it is officially done. It is beautiful. I do like it so far. I, again, I have not completely spread it out. Um, I will do that when I take a picture that you guys saw already. So this is the biggest completed project that I have so far. Um, completed this time. I did actually complete it in the new year, so it was not actually completed in 2019, but it was the first completed object for 2020. <laughs> that is all my completed projects, and yes, there were quite a few of them. It seems like I didn't talk to you guys all that long ago, but at the same time, I seem to have completed a lot of smaller things along with my one big project. So really excited about that. Uh, moving on to my works in progress. Uh, my first work in progress is something that will not be completed for a really, really long time because I ran out of yarn. So uh, the first work in progress is the Christmas tree dishcloth. And I am approximately, as you guys can tell, like I literally ran out of yarn here. What side is which? Which side is which? Okay, this is actually the main side. Um... I, I seriously ran out of yarn, <laughs> but this is where I got to for my Christmas tree dishcloth. Does have a nice little Christmas tree in there, which is nice. It's cute. Um, it is reversible, just so you guys know. But there you go. Uh, this pattern I should tell you about this <laughs> is from Barbara Breiter, B R E I T E R. Check the top of the screen. Uh, this is 100% DK yarn by Paintbox. I actually like this side better. It is in the red colorway. Again, there are 56 different colorways or 50 colorways or something like that to choose from. 
This is a DK weight yarn. The pattern does call for a worsted weight yarn. So to compensate for that, I added a about five extra stitches on both edges. And then I added another five rounds at the bottom and I will add another five rounds at the top. Um, but again, that's the Christmas tree dishcloth. And this is the right side because my little marker is there, but at the same time, it's not the side I like. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, again, I ran out of yarn. I'm not going to, you know, put a whole order in just for one skein. It doesn't make sense to pay for the shipping for that. So there you go. So that is my first work in progress. So whenever I order again from Paintbox or that company that I get Paintbox from, which is lovecrafts.com, by the way, link you guys in the description box below. I will grab more of that colorway and I will work that in. It'll probably be two-toned, knowing me. Okay, that is project number one. Project number two is going to be my Trendsetters Transitional Tweed Zigzag Triangle Shawl. So this is what those are going to look like. This shawl is designed by, get a little bit closer of a look here, Barry Klein. And it was designed, it comes with, this pattern comes with uh, the Trendsetter Tweed that I showed you, I think it was two episodes ago. I got this Trendsetter's Tweeds little kit right here. And the yarn comes in it, the pattern comes in it. The only thing that you need are needles, which is great. Um, I am soon going to be going on a trip pretty soon. And uh, I was like, hey, this might be really nice to take with me. So how far am I? Not very far. I basically have cast it on. <laughs> It is a triangle shawl and you cast on the largest part of the shawl first and you work your way down, not your way up. But so it is 316 stitches and it increases and decreases from there. But there you go. So I basically have done the cast on. I started it this morning. I needed something that I wanted to make sure I could do while I was on my trip and this seemed like a great little project to bring with me. So there is my second work in progress. Oh, I'm getting everything out of the way as we talk about it. <laughs> my third work in progress uh, is the Marsh Tea by Amy Palmer. And I will tell you, it's, it's in timeout. Um, I actually went to pick it up and work on it last night. And I realized I need to measure my mom in order to know where I need to start and stop the neckline and the arm seams. So yeah, I was like, no, this doesn't really work if you don't measure your mom first, <laughs> since the, I am actually creating it for my mother. So fun, <laughs> right? It helps if you know you measure properly. Woohoo for me. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Just what you guys wanted to know. All right, so that is all of my current work in progresses, my current works in progress, or my projects in progress, if you guys would like to call it that instead, whichever one. Uh, there are a few things that I hope to get up next on my needles. Um, move this over here. So, like before, I would love to, there's a name on here, that's why I'm going to block this out. Oh, there we go. I would love to work on Building Blocks by, it's a Building Blocks Blanket by Michelle Hunter. Um, I know several people that have purchased the pattern, created the blanket that is on the back of it. There's a picture of the blanket completed. Hope you guys can see that. I'm still trying to find the right yarn and I am pretty sure that I'm just going to turn around and purchase the yarn that was actually used um, by the pattern designer for this because I'm struggling. I just, I want to make it so bad, but at the same time, I want to make it out of something that's not 100% acrylic. Uh, I want to make it for my bed, so I want to make it one set of blocks longer than what the pattern calls for. It's a set of 12 blocks that you create and sew together to create this blanket. And it's kind of designed more as like a little afghan but I want to make it longer. I want to make it fit my bed. Um, 
And with JD, who you guys kind of sort of hear snoring in the background here, he loves to lay on any blanket, any blanket in the house he thinks it's his. So I like the way that wools feel, but making it out of wool is unrealistic for me. Um, so I need like a wool cotton blend. I need a superwash merino. I'll need a cotton, you know, 100% cotton or a cotton acrylic blend or something like that. Uh, I personally don't want to make it out of 100% acrylic. I personally like a little bit more of the natural fibers than I do the synthetic fibers. Not that I have anything against them. Obviously, I just completed a giant blanket out of acrylic. Um, I just like the feel of it a little bit more. Certain acrylics will make my skin break out sometimes, and I just don't want to have that problem. So uh, I'm still looking for the proper yarn in the proper color. I found a yarn that I thought would be great with this pattern. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't have the color that I wanted or any of the colors that I wanted. I picked like four out of the stack of colors that they, they had available or they had. Uh, they produced the yarn in, I should say. <laughs> But at the same time, none of them were in stock in the quantity that I was going to need. So, interesting on that one. All right, that's one that I would like to do or complete. Uh, the second one that I would love to complete, this is Convergence by Yumiko Alexander. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to go on a retreat in February. This might be going on that retreat with me. I just, oh, probably should actually hold it over here so you guys can see it a little better. I just absolutely love the look of this top. It's kind of definitely more what I would personally wear for myself. I think it's really great. Um, I plan on making it out of Southwest Trading Company's 100% Bamboo. Southwest Trading Company is a 100% online store. They have a 100% Bamboo yarn that I have used for another pattern that I'm going to frog my completed project and I'm going to make this out of it. Um, it's gonna be in the Pacific Blue colorway. So I do have to frog the project in order to make that happen. You guys have heard about that a few times now. Oh, and last but not least, well, not last but not least, um, <laughs> I'm also thinking about taking on my trip because it's a fairly long trip for me. I am thinking about bringing this Yarn Pirate yarn, if you guys can see that. It is in the Sweet Lime colorway. It is a fingering weight yarn. It is 460 yards of bamboo, merino, and nylon, which is just great. <laughs> I'm thinking about making, excuse me, my eye edges, the Raindrops sweater or top. I don't really know if it's a true sweater, but I'm gonna call it a top for, you know, argument's sake, by Tin Can Knits. So again, Raindrops by Tin Can Knits. I'm gonna knit it out of this. I'm going to make this for my lovely niece because she is going to be small enough that I can use this skinny yarn and make an entire sweater for her. I cannot use this skinny yarn and make a sweater for me. It's just not going to work. <laughs> Last but not least, um, again, when I go on the retreat in February, I am hoping to create a Hokey Locatelli pattern named Lounge Top. Again, description box below for the Ravelry link. And uh, it does call for a sport weight yarn. However, I did look up the wraps per inch for this Packa Peds HT that I showed you guys last episode. And the wraps per inch are approximately the same. So that's really nice. <laughs> so the wraps per inch are approximately the same. If I need to, I can adjust to a larger size for the pattern and keep the needle size the same, which is really kind of nice. So I have these colorways are, let's see if I can figure them out. This is Green Gator. And this one here is Harvest. This one here is Harvest. And this one is Green Gator. And when I looked at them, they look really good together. So I was thinking I could stripe all three of them since they are hand dyed I would have to stripe all three or stripe two and then when I needed to work in the next one um, work in the next one as this one ends and this one begins because I'll have some variation and breakout between them 
But yeah, so Lounge Top by Hoka Lo Hokey Locatelli. I'm really looking forward to trying this. I do have to scan them up and get my swatches made and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. Boom. Whew. Wah. Okay. So some of those you guys have heard uh, before as my upcoming projects. Some of those you haven't. Um, but hey, you know, so fun. All right. So a little bit of enhancing the stash. Because as everybody knows, it was around Christmas time recently and... Around Christmas, you always have some stash enhancement. Uh, but there are a few things that I really want to share with you guys. So the first one was made by my mom, who is, again, a sewer and a quilter. And as some of you guys know, I'm a huge animal fan. So my mom made me another large project bag, clear-fronted project bag. But this time with little bones and paw prints inside. <laughs> so again, I am just tickled pink by this one. So I thought I just had to show it to you guys. It's like my absolute favorite, I'm putting it on the side. Um, it's very large, it fits, you know, the blanket project plus a couple of skeins of yarn all fit in this bag at one time. So you couldn't lose it, <laughs> which was really nice. Uh, or at least the size bag, it wasn't this particular one, but it was in my frog one for the majority of the time. So this bag is really great for that. So there's that. Um, something else that was given to be, given to me by a member of my local knitting group is this phenomenal woven and knitted hat and ooh, it does have a brim on it and I'll actually pull it a little bit closer it is this really cool part knitted part woven beaded hat and it's got dreadlocks on the back of it I just absolutely love these dreads um, She's got some with like little beads on the back of them and it is just the absolute coolest thing I've seen. Um, I'll actually put it on for you guys. I always put the dreadlocks to the back. You don't have to, but I do. Doesn't work quite as well when my hair is up because it's not quite large enough to go over my hair. But it is like my favorite hat ever. I, when she first made it, I kind of sort of stole it from her and I wore it around all day <laughs> until she made me give it back. So she decided to give it to me for Christmas. So you know who you are. Thank you so much. It's my favorite hat. I've worn it a couple of times now and it's just the coolest thing ever. Um, but again, because I don't have any, my hair is not down and low enough, it doesn't stay on very well. Um, and the top part is woven on a loom. And the bottom ribbing, as you can see there, is hand knit. So she picked up around the bottom and knit the bottom. So oh, that was my that was my really, really cool one this year. So you know who you are. Thank you so stinking much. It is amazing. It is again like my favorite hat ever. <laughs> A um our group leader did get everybody the Knitter's Pride Rainbow Knit Blockers. These are the pins that you stick in your knitted blocking. She has a set of those, which was just amazing. I will totally use these. Um, the owner and proprietress of Isabel's Parlor made these really cute. Pull it up to the counter there. Hopefully you guys can see that. If not, sorry, it's bouncing around. Um, it is this really cute stitch marker. It says made with love on it. Really, really adorable. Um, somebody else. Okay, I thought this was stinking adorable. She wrapped around a candy cane a stitch marker, but I thought I would wait and actually unwrap it in front of you guys. Wee! I'm not really sure how she did this. Because I can see what the stitch marker is, but you guys can't see what the stitch marker is until I open it up. Oh, she knotted it. She also, with along with the candy cane, and I, again, based on last time's episode, you guys know, I'm a candy cane nut. She gave us these really cute candy stitch markers. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I, like, I just think it's adorable. So, I got that as well. And as part of my group, we did a skein exchange. And as part of that, <laughs> I got this really cool, 
I'll hold it up to you guys. I got this really cool skein of yarn and it's actually a cone of yarn. And I'm actually gonna read you guys what it's made of. Um, it's man-made and synthetic fibers from Majestic Canyon Work for retail sales. It's 82% acrylic, 18% rayon viscose. Uh, it's made in Mexico. It's a one pound, it's 2,460 yards or 450 grams, which is 2,250 meters. So I don't know what this is gonna grow up to be yet, but I'm guessing probably a sweater because there is actually enough quantity on here that I could make something for myself out of this fingering weight yarn. And I would make it, I would classify it as a fingering weight yarn. I don't know where the end of it is. Well, here's an end, let's put it that way. Um, I would call it probably a fingering weight. So that was also another really cool thing that I got. I think that's everything for enhancing the stash. If I missed anything, I will bring it to you guys next episode. Um, but I don't think there's anything. Okay, so on to our, I guess, unusual segment of our episode, but it's my 2020 goals. Um, I decided for 2020 that this was going to be my year of selfish knitting. And the reason why that is, is I have a tendency to knit a lot of things for gifts or because people ask me to knit them for them or, you know, I give away most of my knitting. Um, this year I want to knit more things for myself. Uh, I want to knit more garments. I want to knit more things that I want to keep myself um, or things that I just want to try and not things that I feel that I have to knit for other people. So, so in my llama notebook, I got a new notebook for a new year, guys. Uh, I have a few knitted goals written down and my first goal is to knit four garments. And as you guys can see, I already have four garments listed that I want to knit. If I knit more than that, that'd be great. If I knit less than that, okay, fine. Like in 2019, I had the same goal of four garments. I think I only got about two and a half done. So um, I am thinking that little kid garments also count. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> I want to learn a new skill or technique. Uh, this is a carryover goal from last, last uh, year's goals. Uh, last year I learned double knitting. This year I don't know what I want to learn, but um, I just want to learn something new. I want to try something new, whether it's a new stitch, whether it's a new um, cast on, whether it's, I want to learn something new, um, new skill or technique or stitch or something like that. Um, I want to log all of my new yarn and Ravelry. I do not have everything that I have purchased. I do not have everything that I own in Ravelry anymore. Somewhere along the line, I just stopped recording it in the Ravelry and that has come to be a problem for me. <laughs> so I wanna go back in and I wanna put in all my yarns that I own into Ravelry again. Um, I only want to purchase yarn for very specific projects. That is a goal that I have this year. I purchased, let me see if I can find it again. I purchased this yarn in 2019 for with that Hoagie Locatelli lounge top in mind. Um, again, it's not quite the exact same weight. However, it is the same wraps per inch or approximately the same wraps per inch. I'm off by half a wrap, but yeah. So I did purchase that in 2019 with the thought that I was going to make it into the lounge top. So. I want to kind of keep that theme kind of going this year. I don't want to just buy because it looks pretty. I want to buy it for a specific pattern or have something in mind for it before I purchase it. It might not work. It might. I don't know. <laughs> it didn't work for 2019, let me tell you. Um, I want to use up 15% of my stash. I think last year I used up somewhere between 10 and 15%. Um, however, I put an extra 10 to 15% into my stash. Uh, I don't want that to continue. I want to, I want to reduce the stash that I hold and I want to use that yarn that I've purchased already because I purchased it for a reason. I liked it and I wanted to work with it. So I, I want to get back to doing that. 
Um, so that's part of the thing of purchase, you know, those two kind of coincide the purchase only for specific projects as well as use my stash. I want to cast on all new projects or all, yeah, all new projects within six months. So I don't want to buy yarn for projects that I can't complete within the next six months or within the next year, because then you just wind up building a stash that you just, you, you can't sustain that for very long. Um, because I just don't have the space to hold the stash. I just don't. <laughs> Between the limited space that I do have, um, as well, that space gets shared between my knitting hobby and my paper crafting hobby. And that one has also kind of taken over. And I don't want that to happen either. So I'm, I'm trying to pare that kind of stuff down to the stuff that I use and tools. And I want to, I want to leave the space open for things that can be reused and not only used once. So I want to use that stuff that I purchase, you know, relatively in, in a decent time frame. Let's just go with that. So again, cast it only projects within six months. I would love to actually knit a pair of socks. This was a goal from 2019 that I did not complete. So uh, again, another pair. Uh, I would like to do at least or knit at least one lace project again this year because I do enjoy doing lace. I would like to knit one color work project this year as well. I would love to get back to doing some color work. I don't think I did color work at all in 2019 and I do like the look of it so I would like to get back to that. Um, and I would like to do a cable project. I have not done a cable project in 2019 either, I don't think, or if it, I did, it was very minimal. So I would love to do more cabling. Um, I would like to complete at least one crochet project and I wrote this goal after I completed those lovely crocheted scrubbies. So those do not count. Uh, take pictures of all completed projects and post them to Ravelry. <laughs> I currently in my Ravelry page have 19 completed projects without pictures. I have 19 projects that are currently in work that don't have anything completed on them and they're all done. Not a single one of them of those 19 are outstanding. So I would like to update my Ravelry page and actually keep it current. So that's a goal of that. Um, I would love to record another 12 episodes, one episode a month for you guys here with my lovely channel. And along with that, if you guys have watched my intro video, I did mention that in 2020, I would like to, uh, begin doing other videos, yarn comparison videos, how-to videos, my method for doing things. I would love to get those actually started and complete 12 of those as well. So like an every other week kind of a schedule. So that's kind of what I'm looking into. Um, you know, I, I would love to complete some of those things because I think if I'm able to complete some goals, that's great if I don't, you know, it's just something to work for towards for me. I don't feel that when I make those goals that I'm putting arbitrary pressure on myself. If you guys can tell, they're fairly generalized for me. I, I don't say, oh, I want to knit this garment, this garment, this garment, and this garment. Yeah, I might have some in mind, but they might change as well. I don't actually know. So, but those are just some kind of goals that I would like to, to complete within 2020 and hopefully they come true. If not, We'll just make those goals for 2021. As you can tell, the whole knitted sock thing didn't really work for 2019. So <laughs> there you go. Um, I think we are coming to the end of our episode. Uh, for next time, I hope to have some new completed objects, some new whips to show you, uh, most likely some new stash enhancement based on my travels and my retreat that I'm going on in 2019, in February. 2019 in February of 2020. I'm looking for those. I'm looking to have my Ravelry projects page updated um, at least through whatever is current and then to kind of, you know, keep that going forward. Uh, I would love to release one of my other types of videos by then as well. Um, so again, come back and see me again. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
you guys would like to see more episodes like this, as well as some of my other episodes or some of my other videos coming up, go ahead and click that subscribe button that is down in the description box below or near the description box below. And until next time, I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful start to their 2020 year. And until next time, just keep knitting everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.